So welcome back to another episode of Try Real Hard. On this episode, we are looking back again at that final crunch week that led up to the deadline of the 18th of February 2022 when voting began. Voting is still ongoing at present until the 22nd of February 2022. So if you haven't got your vote in already, go to the Spindat website, to the polls and vote for your top five bike builds in this competition. 20 semi-finalists are going to be whittled down to five finalists going forward. So please go and get your vote in now. On this episode, I'll show you all the details of getting the 1x10 wide range drivetrain going. So we actually get the bike shifting through the 10 gears in this episode. So I hope you enjoy it. So I need to get this front wheel off, put it back in my elite work stand, and I'll do it that way in order to run gear cable from the front to the back. I have my box here of all the different gear cables that I've got um, so we will see what I end up using but yeah I've got what I need there and then in this corner over here I have um, my brake cable and a bit of electrical tape for when I end up running that rear cantilever brake. There is one more thing I want to mention before I go ahead and get this bike on the work stand and that is this bottom bracket cable guide that you can see I've fitted here. I did this earlier so that the glue could dry. So I'll just run the footage for that now. So I hope you guys can see this, but there's a little hole just here in the bottom bracket shell. So this is underneath the bike now. And in order to run the gear cable uh, to the rear derailleur, I need a cable guide like this one to fit just here. Um, now normally these have a threaded screw hole and you can just screw this in now this cable guide fits nicely but the hole under the bottom bracket is not threaded so what i'm going to do here is just take a little bit of this gorilla glue and and with that i'm just going to stick the screw in place under the bottom bracket shell yeah this isn't the best method but this is a two-part glue, it's really strong and actually the cable itself will hold it on as well uh, once the glue is dry. So that's the plan. <laughs> um, I hope that it's going to work out okay. So what you do is just get a little bit of water in a cup and I've got that here. And put water on one of the surfaces and the glue on the other surface and then I'm just going to try and find something to wedge under here to push against it so that it doesn't drop out with the glue on. So I don't know if you can see this, but I've got a little bit of glue on the end of the screw now. Uh, I just applied that with the end of a nail um, to get the finer drops onto it. I'm going to wet with the water inside here. Just make sure there's some wet there. And then I'm just going to push this into the hole. So this glue does actually expand, so I'm just going to wipe off the excess there. Check to see if there's any excess on the back, like that. And then try and find something to just wedge in the right position though. I'm only going to be using this side for the cable that runs along this chain state to the rear derailleur. So not too crucial the positioning of this yeah i could actually cut this arm off if i wanted to so i've just got this screwdriver and i've put a bolt in the end to get it to the right height this looks like it's gonna end up being about the right height there so i'm just wedging this against the ground now so as you can see the screwdriver is just propping up that bolt and it's wedged here against the ground so yeah that's the way i'm gonna hold it on so uh yeah that should be good i mean inside there there is the internal sheath um the sort of water protector for the bottom bracket that might be a bit stuck when i try and remove it or something like that but I've not really had a problem with this in the past and I have used this trick before. Uh, it's much easier to just get one of these Shimano or Campag 
think this is a compact box standard bottom bracket cable guides and then to use a bit of glue rather than trying to add threads to that hole or find the exact one with the right clip fitting. So yeah, there we are, we're ready now to string up the derailleur on this right hand shifter to the back of here as soon as that glue has dried. Because we're in the UK and the brake is on the right hand side, that will mean that the right shifter will then be finished. Okay, so I'll get this bike on the work stand and we can start cabling it up. As you can see one good feature of this work stand is that the, the cable guide that fits to the bottom bracket shell has a place to run and is kind of protected on the stand so you can still run cables through it and you can still do all of the work you need to do running gear cables and brake cables on the stand you just have to take either the front or rear wheel out depending on what job it is that you're doing Right, so with the bike now on the stand, I've been looking for what I'm going to need to do this. I have these little end caps for the cable outer and some cable donuts. I don't think I'll use those because I find that they sometimes scratch the frame. Uh, we've also got some of these um, frame protectors. I think I might try and find a different colour because these are bright red. I can't see that really fitting with anything else on the bike. <laughs> and. We've also got a new gear cable here that I've got stored in this bag and some cable outer. So I need to just cut everything to length and start running it. So I'll just fast forward through while I do that. So the only annoying thing about this work stand is that you can't really gauge how long you need the cable outer to be for turning the handlebars with it locked in this position. So that's a bit frustrating. But I've just left it a little bit longer than it needs to be for now, in my opinion. And I can cut it down once it's on the ground if I need to. I'm just gonna run a little bit of chain oil along this cable before I thread it through the housing. Hopefully the housing is the right length and I don't have to change it again. So now I've got the cable outer routed and taped to the handlebar and running down into this cable mount on the frame here. I'm just going to attempt, because this rack's a bit awkward, it doesn't really allow you to check if it's long enough for the, when the handlebars turn. So I'm just going to attempt to loosen the position of the bike on the rack so that I can just check the handlebars left and right to see if I've got enough housing there. I've just taken it out of the frame cable mount and if I go any less then it does start to pull so I think we're at the right length here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I've just been out to the shed to look for one of these frame protectors because the cable housing is hitting the frame at this point here. But I couldn't find anything out in the shed at all. None of the other bikes have anything that can pinch one off. Apart from my road bike here that's 
sitting on the turbo trainer. So I've pinched this one off here, but there's already a bit of cable rub there on the frame. So I will have to replace that at some point, but I think these are just like an AliExpress. So this says tar lead, T-A-L-A-E-D. So that'll do for now for protecting the head tube. Obviously the paint's pretty nice on this diamond back ascent and I don't really want to affect that. So we'll just pop this one on here. There we go, that should do it. Right, so now to run this inner cable down under the bottom bracket and all the way over to this cable outer mount here and then onto the derailleur itself just here. All right, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'll have to fit another piece of housing just from the mount into the derailleur. <laughs> believe my bad luck and this is not something that I noticed before but because I bought this via derailleur off Facebook marketplace it hasn't got the actual cable stop fixing bolt it's missing so I run the inner cable all the way around to this point and I've got no way of securing it <laughs> so I started digging out some of the other derailers that I have hanging about to look at how that works. Um, I've also got this SRAM red one which I don't want to steal the parts from because this is set aside for a future project um, but at least that gives me an idea of how SRAM tend to work uh, but this is road and this is one by so it might be slightly different but yeah I think I'll look at sort of trying this one on it and then see if I can steal one like this from another one because I don't want to steal from a SRAM red rear derailleur at all. So if we just take this out, see first and foremost whether this would fit. Okay, so it's the right bolt size. But I don't think that this washer is the right type for this. So I'll just put that back and I'll have a look at these other derailers and try and get one that works. Nothing's ever simple, is it? When you've done it all through eBay and Facebook Marketplace. I didn't even notice I had this problem until now. I don't want to have any issues anymore at this late stage in the game. So let's try and get this fixed. Yeah, so as I said, I can't believe my bad luck. I think from looking at other YouTube videos, there's a washer and a bolt that are missing from here. So, what I've managed to find, and I don't know how I found something of this nature, but I've managed to find a washer with a groove in it. I don't know if you can see that there. Which seems to fit in that specific area. And I've also managed to find this bolt, which is a bit shorter than normal bottle cage bolt. So I don't know which way up the washer should go, really whether you end up clamping the wire to this casing. There does seem to be a bit of a mark there, like maybe that's what you do. So, yeah, this washer actually has one side cut off of it, which is the only reason it fits in here. So I don't know if this is the correct thing that I've just lost somehow, but anyway, I'm gonna screw that on there. In that orientation, I'm going to put the cable through the little recess in the washer. Yes! So that seems to be working. The wire is not moving and the bolt is tightening. So that's good. Right, we'll just try and get the cable tension right. 
and we'll have a play with some gearing. installed this gold chain when I was super tired but I've made a schoolboy over there who was actually running over the chain guard back there. I don't know if anybody was eagle-eyed and noticed that but that's a schoolboy ever. But yeah it's back in position now and uh, I think I've got the cable tension up around about right so I'm just going to try the gears out at this stage. super interesting thing to note here is that I've not removed any links from this chain. Um, I don't know how much... Oh, there's still a little bit of give in this derailleur, so that's good news. It's also interesting that the actual teeth of the derailleur are narrow wide, so you have to be careful to make sure that, that they are in position. But yeah, this is a stock road chain, and because I've got a 42 on the front chain ring and a 42 on the back, it's the chain's pretty much the right length out of the box. Very strange, I've never had that before. I've never had a situation where I don't have to remove any links from the chain. But yeah, it seems good. So it's been raining pretty much all day. I'll just play a clip of it chucking it down now. <laughs> Uh, and when it rains, obviously the conservatory roof is just so loud in here and actually it gave me a headache. I had to step out of this room for a bit and, and actually work on the bike in the lounge for a little while. But I've been busy and I've actually had to change the spacing of the axle. So the spacing on the, on the axle there, I've actually had to add a spacer on the drive side and uh, remove a spacer on the non-drive side. I don't know whether that's a quirk of this old frame, but the wheel wasn't sitting central in the middle of the dropouts. It was it was too far um, to the drive side. So I've added a spacer in there and obviously used the limit screws to set the limit so that it doesn't end up in the gap here or scraping on the frame. This is the first time I've had a one by setup, so I think that that spacing actually has allowed the chain line to be in a better position. So now the chain is lining up with the fifth cog in, which is pretty much in the middle. So I'm happy with that spacing. But yeah, it's shifting pretty damn nice. So I just wanted to show you that right now. So I hope you could see there that the gears are now shifting pretty crisply for a 32, 33 year old rear derailleur hanger. That was the concern. If that was bent, then that would have required me to mess about and try and fix that. But yeah, I think uh, the way that it's turning out is good. So um, I can take it off the stand now and put that wheel back on, ready to test it. So thanks for watching another episode of Try Real Hard. I think the best way to finish off this episode is going to be to take the cable cutters and cut the end of that off, put a little end cap on, keeping it black with the end caps, and just crimp it into position there. There we go. Tidy job. Done. So thanks for watching another episode of Try Real Hard. Please do like and subscribe. And if you're enjoying this build series, then I'd really appreciate it if you could vote for my build on the Spindap website.